my day has turned into a crazier day than I ever thought it could be. Okay, let's face it, the last video I just put out, asking Charmahai to do the right thing, that was such a waste of my time. Of course Charmahai aren't going to do the right thing. They never intended to do the right thing. They're liars, they're cheaters, they're crooks. Okay, it was just a waste of my effort making my last video. And I see that now. I see that now. I'm stuck with this piece of crap machine. I know. They're not going to do the right thing. So, what I thought I would do <laughs> is make a bit of a series just about how good <laughs> this machine is. Right? Stacks of people in my comments are asking for specifics about what's wrong with the machine and to see examples of what the machine's doing. So, why don't we do that? <laughs> But it didn't turn out how I planned. So this morning, my plan was, I was going to wake up in the morning, I was going to come in here, I was going to listen to John Ox's live stream that he does every Sunday, and I was going to fix the panel of, the second panel of Tiny Pico Nanos that I built on this machine that I had to obviously hand fix maybe 50% of the parts on. And then, like I said in my last video, I was going to hand assemble a bunch of Reflow Masters. That was my plan. But I'm stuck with this machine. And so I thought to myself, you know what? I'm just going to do a hybrid build of my Reflow Master boards. I'm just going to, I've got a whole bunch of passives already set up on the machine. There was only two parts I needed to load and I had two spare feeders at the back. And so I've got the Neoden feeders now, which is great. So, you know, they should work way better than the Charm High crap that they sent me. And so I configured the board to build just a hybrid Reflow Masters. Okay, no QFNs, no large ICs, just SOT 23s or SOT 23-5s and 0603 passives. <laughs> That's it. Okay, this machine should breeze with that. Breeze. This is how it turned out. Hopefully you can see contrast-wise what's on the screen. I'm going to show you what it placed on the first board, <laughs> right? And show you the, the type of shit I have to deal with on this machine. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go through all the parts it placed. It's about 25, 26 parts out of the 40 odd that I need per board. Okay, so I'm just going to cycle through, through this view. So, starting at part number zero, I'll just do a coordinate view. It'll go and it'll show you where it's placed the part. And if you look at the orange crosshair, that's the placement position that it's going for. But that part, that's great, awesome. Next, that part, that one there, okay. Some of these are almost usable. We'll get to that in a moment. Well, don't know where that part is. <laughs> okay. Pretty random in its offset positions. So far looking good, right? Look at that. So that part is the same as that part. There are four of them in a row, vertically. So I don't know what happened there. What happened there? <laughs> like that shouldn't shouldn't have even picked it up if that's where its placement position is I mean how far offset from center could you possibly be another one 10k resistor don't know what I was thinking oh look at another one exactly the same so Four of them vertically in a row, one of them it places perfectly, three of them it places badly. All with the same nozzle, all the same pickup position from the same feeder. Right? <sighs> okay. Did everyone just, sorry, did everyone just see that? That could be the missing part from over there <laughs> that we saw before. It probably is, it looks like it is. <laughs> okay. So the last, see that 1.2K? Look at that 1.2K. 
Okay. Let's see, let's see the f yeah, we'll get to the FET. Uh, to the transistor. So, there's supposed to be a transistor there. I just want to show you something. You've got to remember not to set this. There's supposed to be a transistor there, right? Watch this. Oh, look, there it is. <laughs> okay, let me just go back. Uh, let me go back in. I don't want to save that change of position I just made. Okay, so there's supposed to be a transistor there. It's down the bottom of the board. I don't know how it got there, right? Next. USB, place is perfect. Okay. That's fine. That transistor, perfect. Came from the same nozzle, the same feeder position. My IP2112 voltage regulator, perfect. Okay, not terrible. Not terrible. <laughs> there's no consistency. Can anyone say that? That there's no consistency on this machine. So three parts that have come from the same feeder position. I'll show you the pickup positions now, right? I'll go through all the feeders and show you. All the pickup positions are set. This has got vision turned on. You can see the bounding box flicking around. Anyway. It's got vision turned on, and this is where it placed them. So that's the last part, right? They're all the parts that I was placing. So let's go back out and go to the stack that shows you all the parts. So let's have a look from... I think my 0603100 nanofarad is the first part it places from this along. So I think this is as far back for all the parts. So let's go have a look. Now I've already checked these. But I'm happy to show you them again. So, use vision, yeah? Coordinate setting. Now, obviously, the part moves inside the pocket, but that's dead center of the pocket. That's the best I can do to compensate for shift, right? Dead center of the pocket, that's the best I can do, because as you can see, it shifts inside. Okay, a little bit to the left, but it should compensate for, with vision. Use vision. Pretty much smack bang on. The 1.2 is their offset leftwise. Look at that bounced part. 0603 component bounced part. Anyway, that's pretty much dead center. Dead center. These were all calibrated before I did the board run because I have to, because every time I boot the machine, the homing calibration is off, so I have to center all the parts. So this was already done by me before I ran the board. These are the 10Ks. These are the ones that were, one of them was correct and three of them were wrong. These both placed fine. Little to the side. Here's my, here's my transistors, look at that. Dead center. My transistors are dead center pickup. One of them placed perfectly, one of them placed wrong, and one of them was no wind, it fell off. But look at that, dead center pickup. Shot keys. Also pretty much dead center pickup. They both placed fine. That was using head two. That was using head two. The same head. I'm not going to waste this part. This part placed fine. So, there you go. Like, seriously. That one was fine. Look at that. How does it do that? It's not even close. This is what I need to fight on this machine all the time. Now, how do I solve this? The pickup position's perfect, the placement position's perfect. Like, if all of the parts were wrong on the board, fine. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's my calibration file. Maybe it's the file completely. Although this file was created on this machine. It was not exported from Eagle. I actually created all of these on the machine. It took me about 15 minutes. It wasn't that hard, including 
setting up the calibration positions which are fine as you know because some parts place perfectly and setting up the batch, a 2x2 two two on the panel. But this just can't reliably place or pick up. It's not my settings. You can see good and bad placement on that board for no reason at all. Nothing to justify what is wrong other than this machine is a piece of shit. Here's the final panel that I built out of the pick and place machine. <laughs> so, as you can see, it's now placing them correctly, or fairly correctly. There's still, you know, an 0603 resistor on its side because the machine clearly is bouncing parts still. But registration wise, things look better. They're not perfect, they're still off slightly, but not like they were over here, where I've got just parts randomly all over the place. How did I do this? Well, I turned the machine off and I turned it back on again. <laughs> and I then recalibrated the pickup positions again and wasted a stack more parts. But then it started placing properly. Now I showed you the pickup position for this one and they were fine. If anything, the new ones I made when I rebooted the machine, I didn't even take as much care on them. But anyway, it's placed better, but why do I have an upside down LDO here? And more importantly, that was supposed to be over here, but it's not. So it placed two LDOs correctly, not the third one. And there's no fourth one at all. But have you noticed where are the USB connectors? It placed a USB connector. There are no more USB connectors. There's no errors on the machine. It didn't error, didn't beat once. There was no failed pickups. I now have to go and search my machine for where the missing USBs are. But I don't understand it because they're set to use vision. There's no way that this USB here could be placed into the peg legs, as you can see here, accurately without vision. Yet it didn't detect that there was no USBs. It skipped three of them and skipped an LDO. And this LDO landed upside down over here. So, yeah, this is just an absolute disaster. This is why you don't want to buy a charm high pick and place machine. I have to go through now and add all the parts that I had to add anyway, plus add the missing parts. But I'm not confident running another board on this now. I don't know why it's placing and not placing some parts. And by the way, why is there an 0402 resistor sitting here? Where did that come from? <laughs> There's no 0402 parts on the board. Like, I'm laughing at this because it's so funny that a machine could be so bad and inconsistent for no particular reason. This machine just has a mind of its own. It's just incapable of detecting whether there's any vacuum or not on a part. So I have to turn vacuum detection off. I think vision is failing. I think the reason this all placed badly was because vision wasn't working. And when I rebooted it, vision started working again. That's the only explanation. So the vision is intermittently failing. So maybe the camera is failing. Maybe there's a problem with the camera. I don't know. Maybe this machine is not capable of producing that many boards. Maybe I've broken the machine further by actually building things on it. <laughs> like, like I, I don't know. But none of this can be explained with a bad project file by me. Not when it places bad and I turn the machine off and turn it back on again and it places good on the same file. Like Charm High should be embarrassed. <laughs> should be totally embarrassed that this is what their machine is doing. Don't buy Charm High folks. Don't give them your money. Don't support this bullshit. This machine is honestly a joke. Like I gotta turn the machine off and on all the time to make it work. No it's not running Windows. <laughs> oh my god. Folks don't buy Charm High. Just don't do it. Don't support them. Okay, I've got to show you something else. This is the second panel <laughs> that ran, right? So let's start off with the obvious. We've got an LDO here, but no LDO here. We've got an LDO here, but no LDO here, right? Okay, we've got shot key, no shot key, shot key, no shot key. We've got shot key, sideways shot key, shot key, no shot key. Okay, whatever. We've got 10 nanofarad cap here, just above where the K-type thermocouple IC goes, but not one here, not one here, not one here. Okay? 
we've got two perfectly in the same spot. Actually, three. Three. I didn't notice that one. 0402 resistors that it's placing <laughs> in this relay between the relay pins. I don't know what that is. So about the frame rate, it's uh, very dark in here. So I've had to open up my camera a lot to get enough light. Uh, the, the, I need to run in almost darkness for the pick and place machine. Otherwise it interferes with the cameras. It's really shit, really shit design, right? Anyway, so we've got 0402 resistors just not randomly placed because it's actually placed in the exact spot between these relay pins. They're not in my file. But this is the kicker. You ready for this? This is this is gold. We've got 0.1 nanofarad cap here, a 0.1 here, a 0.1 here, and some unknown 0402 resistor here, where there's supposed to be a 0.1 cap, where it did three times on these other boards, but on this one, it placed an 0402 resistor. <laughs> what the fuck? Like seriously? <laughs> How does it do that? So firstly, these 0402 resistors are on the other end. They're on the other end of the front bank. They're all on the left-hand side of the 30 feeders. And all of my 0603 are on the right-hand side of the feeders. It's not like it actually abs you know, accidentally went to the one to the left of it. <laughs> it's gone to the wrong side of the pick-and-place machine. How does it place? Uh, oh my god. Like, this machine is fucked. Excuse my language. This machine is just screwed. <laughs> like, I couldn't make this shit up. I really couldn't make this shit up. Sideways resistor. It's interesting, there's only the one sideways resistor on this board. We should take the next board out. Wait, where's the next board? Here's, the, here's number four. This is board number four. Let's see what that's done. Okay, here's board number four. I've already done board number one. It's in the oven. I've already fixed that. So this one's placing shot gears fine. <laughs> okay, we've got some sideways resistors. We've still got these 0402 resistors just hanging around between the relay. And there's one over here this time. There it is. We've got no 01 here, a 0.1 microfarad, no 0.1 microfarad over here. Sorry, not in camera. We don't have one here, but we do have one here. But we have these sideways ones. Sorry, over here and here, and here and here. Wow. Sideways resistor, sideways resistor. Over here. I have to keep remembering the camera zoomed in really far. So I could keep moving the board. I mean, this is, this is just a joke. Oh, I forgot to mention, still, yeah, the USBs, they're just not placing. I don't know why. I reckon they're all on the floor. I'm going to have to go look on the floor. But still, LDO, missing, missing, here. I don't know what these little resistors, these 0402 resistors are. They're not in the list. There's no feeder, there's no feeder missing anything. And there's no extra part in the feeder list. We're missing a one microfarad cap here, but got one here. Got one there, got one there. Like, it's just so inconsistent. It's an absolute disaster. Okay, if you want to see more videos in this series of how shit is Sion's Charm High Pick and Place Machine, don't forget to click the like button on here. Make sure you're subscribed, please. Leave me a comment, let me know if you're enjoying these. And please spread the word about this. Like, we need more people to see this. Because this is, this is hilarious. I'll uh, catch you on the next adventure of how shit a charm high pick and places. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two. Bye.